Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 4th of April. Um, around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Mark Waite, I see Stefan Merle, Bruno Verharten, Kevin Martins, Mukul Kumar, and Sonali Rajput. Rajput, I am pronouncing you down correctly. <laughs> It's right, it's right. It's Amali Rashput. Hi, Rashput. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm trying my best with my terrible French accent. I'm really sorry. Ra Rashput. Okay. So, welcome. Uh, yes, you, Merve Lemur, is joining us just when I, s I tell him his name. <laughs> Hello, Hervé. So, Hervé is the last one. Okay, so let's start with the usual announcement. So today's weekly is not out yet. Um, due to the current DigiCert uh, issues, the release this uh, for today is blocked at the verify state. So the WAR file has been generated, tagged and pushed as usual. It used the new GPG key that we added last week. However, it's using, it's still using the old DigiCert expired certificate. That is why the verify step fails. So now we will have different options. We will discuss later. The go, we have, we might have to trigger a new weekly release or not, or we could finish the packaging. Depends on what we want to achieve. That's a discussion for later. And once the packaging step is done, and we have decided to use fully the new DigiCert or not, then we can proceed to the usual delivery bits. Is that a nice quick summary uh, as part of the announcement? I propose that we discuss this option a bit later. Yes. Um, so the second announcement is that we have the new DigiCert certificate. And that's a good news. It should be okay for the tomorrow's LTS release. DigiCert signing certificate is there and should be okay to use with tomorrow LTS. Do you have other announcements? Okay, I don't. So I let I propose we go to the upcoming calendar. So the next weekly could be next week or maybe tomorrow or eventually later today. But we might or might not have a weekly soon before the LTS, which means the next LTS release will be tomorrow. The goal is again to have that LTS release, to have both code signing with the new DigiCert and repository packages signing with the new JPG key. So everyone will stop seeing expired key once you will have imported the current one. Any question? No? Okay. Um, about the security advisories. We don't have any mail on the security mailing list, so NA, no security advisory plant. Next major event, as usual, we have CDCon and DevOx. I will copy and pass from last week, unless you have a new event where you can meet Jenkins community. Nope, okay. So that has been a really really packed week uh thanks mainly uh Hervé and stefan for the huge work you did on all of these tasks and mark for taking care of the certificates that's the 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 greetings that are required for because that week was pretty long, pretty pretty hard on the task that we were able to run and to finish uh the robo butler service has been sunset removed from Puppet, removed from the virtual machine, cleaned up, and its repository and image have been archived. 
haven't seen any error. If we see any error due to that, then we have to trigger an issue, which means that the Edamame machine is now empty from any service. That's an OSUSL sponsored machine. So we should be able to add that machine in, we have different way of doing that, but as an agent for CI Jenkins IO. Uh, food for two. Uh, search that CI the Jenkins IO is now uh, having an automated uh, certificate renewal using Azure DNS and let's encrypt. It's uh, only, and it's everything is managed as code and it's working. So what we did a few months ago with a certificate bound to expire the 11th of April is now renewed every three months, even though that is a private instance. Uh, that was also the opportunity to clean up the DNS as Stefan and I saw. There were, uh, not only we had the current DNS record for third CI that we have to migrate to the new child zone where the permission are restricted, but there were former uh, not used or uh, let's say legacy rec um, records that have been removed. I haven't heard anyone from the, from the security team and no one is ringing at my door to hang me. So I assume CERTCI is working as expected. Uh, trusted CI and CERTCI now have all the permission and Azure credential required to spawn virtual machine agent in Azure. All of these credentials are now restricted only to the resource group or where it's required and everything is managed as code. So thanks Stefan for that work. That includes uh, expiration date for this credential directly inside the code. So if we don't have the time to manage, uh, to switch to manage identity, that will remove the need of having a credential at all. We can have something that check our code publicly and send us alerts before it expires. So again, food for talks, new ideas, uh, it's ready to be worked on. Digital Ocean, we have a token that should, have, uh, that should expire in a few days that has been rotated. Maybe it won't serve, but at least uh, we have a new three months valid token for the technical infrastructure and everything is working. Um, Someone proved that they weren't a spammer, so we created the account with no spamming issue. I assume that the spam message come from their IP that was marked as from a public IP uh, marked as abusing. Because I'm not sure why the anti-spam will be triggered for these persons, since I was able to create the account on my own. So the only difference, I reused the information they gave. So either they had something on their web browser that was sending spamming requests to accounts. I'm not really sure. Anyway, the account was created. So I let the user do the thing. Uh, social link updated on GitHub organizations. That's a new feature. Thanks, Alex and team and Hervé. Uh, that has been updated on our GitHub organization page. Uh, miss, so someone was trying to create an account. They weren't using the correct email. I purposely avoided to give the correct email. Either that person gets the correct email or create a new account. I don't want to risk any account takeover on that area. Uh, congratulations, Hervé again. We were able to close the introduce artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. So it was reopened due to issues that are tracked on another issue because the work for the ACP uh, is there. We finished all the tasks that were to be finished last week. So that one is considered closing. Now it's not creating a new service. It's um, finding why the service in some edge cases is not working as expected, which is a different topic. Uh, another account issue, account show log status, the user was able to, to find and fix their issue, so that's closed. Uh, we added a new repository on CI Jenkins IO to be built, a coverage model as per uh, uh, someone requests. So we have now a number when we need to run a scan organization on the whole 
Jenkins here organization for the plugins, it takes one hour and 20 minutes. It succeeds. Um, and if it's not running and at the same time of 10 or 12 other bomb builds, then it succeeds without any problem. The main challenge here is that it has to pause because we have a, a rate limits imposed on GitHub API. So it needs a 30 minute pause in the middle. That way it takes so much time. Otherwise it should be more 40, 45 minutes. There might be solution, but I, I haven't found any about how uh, making it even using different GitHub app. Uh, I'm not sure. Theoretically, we should not have any API rate limit with the GitHub app for this kind of operation. But it sounds like a GitHub branch source plugin inside Jenkins uh, limitation. I assume it comes from the time where we, we were using token instead of GitHub app. But I don't have enough knowledge on that area. So it works. Uh, as a general matter of fact, let's try to run this without having a bomb bill running and letting the other that you run this because CI Jenkins IO is using a lot of CPU when doing this. That might be the reason of the rate limit, not because of GitHub API, but because of the CPU usage. Another account issue, the user account was created. We had issues with agent instability a few weeks, even months ago, but James never answered to our question. So I took on me to close the issue, especially the instabilities looked weird. Uh, he assumed that it was uh, out of memory, but it wasn't uh, based on the metric we were able to get. And uh, now we don't have enough information, especially since we changed and shifted all the workload from EC2 to Azure and DigitalOcean and we are back. So I propose to close this one and see if it come back because it wasn't reproduced after the pull request was merged. So that could have been a network issue or something else. Is there any objection on that? Because I don't mind reopening, and but I never had feedback from Jim, so I assume it's closed. No objections from me. Seems like a reasonable response. Uh, Maven 3.9.1 was released and deployed. So thanks everyone involved in that step. Uh, it's generally available and we sent an email to the mailing list. Um, thanks a lot everybody for helping the Jenkins security team and specifically taking that thing alone. So you were able to not only grant access to two new GenSec team member to release.ci, but also you were able to restrict or at least clean up some part of the airbag model. We might need more restriction there, but thanks Daniel for raising that and Hervé for taking care of that step. Uh, Hervé? Did, were we able to restrict all the groups or do we have some following tasks on this one? I don't know. You're muted, Hervé. We have some following tasks, but uh, we should open a, a name desk issue to, to ask uh, other users uh, what uh, restricted permission should be applied for other okay. groups. May I ask you to take care of opening that issue and starting the discussion so we can ask uh, Daniel for a double check. Is that okay for you? Yes. Cool, don't stay to add it to this week milestone. I haven't created it yet, but uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, I haven't heard back from the security team, so I assume it's okay. I believe you checked with uh, at least Kevin, right? and Yaroslav as well. Is that correct, Hervé? What, sorry? Were you able to check with Kevin and Yaroslav if they yeah. were uh, able yeah. to reach VCI? Uh, uh, I've checked with them if they could access uh, the private VPN and release CI. Cool, thanks. Uh, so subsequent issue for back restriction on release.ci. Okay, uh, we were able to close the big issue as well. Congratulations, Hervé. 
We now have a brand, uh, brand new private gates cluster, so a private Kubernetes cluster in Azure, which is hosting Infra CI, Release CI, and our bots that doesn't require public access. It's uh, it completely manages code, so now we can iterate, and it's able to run builds on Linux, on big Linux machines, and on Windows, and using two different subnets for the agents to avoid uh, any security issues. So great work. Um, just a rem just a question again, sorry, Hervé. Were we able to clean up the former cluster, or do we still have that manual task to to run? As indicated, uh, we have some public uh, services to migrate to the new public ADS cluster. Yeah, but I was thinking about the temp private one. Temp private one has been removed. Oh, you cleaned up everything? Oh, cool. Okay. So, ne thanks. Uh, next, someone asked, okay, uh, there was an account question about deleting an account. Uh, Alex was using a Dumi account that has been done. Uh, quite tricky issue, disable pull request merge mode everywhere on CI Jenkins IO. That was a long due request, but that one like the uh, trigger, the full organization scanning and uh, put CI Jenkins IO in outage. So the lesson learned for everyone is that before triggering an organization scanning, we must let the other know in advance. And if we accidentally trigger one, no stress, just cancel it before CI Jenkins IOR become irresponsive, especially when we have already more than a thousand builds on the queue. There might be improvement there, of course, but that's the status for today. Uh, the good thing is that that change is now going to decrease drastically the amount of builds for plugins because now we won't have pull request triggering a build each time the main or destination branch changes, which was the case before. Now we rely on GitHub uh, branch check that say, oh, your branch is not up to date and it's up to the developer to either update the branch, which generate a new commit or new history and trigger a new build or accept that it will stay as it. Thanks Jesse and Tim for uh, taking care of that one that will help on the billing part. Finally, we finished the work around Azure Credential for CI Jenkins IO. So that's uh, work did by Stefan and I. Now the, that's the same as the other controller. The Azure Credential required to trigger virtual machine from CI Jenkins IO in Azure are now managed as code and have a clear expiration date in clear. So we should be able to track it next time. Okay, so that was all for the job that we did. Uh, we closed a few issues that were uh, out of out of subject that has been closed as not planned. And finally, we can go on the work in progress. So first of all, we had an issue with ACP in certain case, only, uh, only when using digital ocean and the bomb builds that are two to 300 parallel steps running on the, each one on a different pod. When we have that, we our cluster are scaled at the maximum. And after 90 minutes of that maximum workload, we start having word issues. Only on digital ocean. So it's not even sure that it's the ACP setup that we have. Because why, why don't we have this on AWS or Azure that sustain the same kind of workload that is for AWS? So we are trying to search the differences that could be related to really low level topics. There has been multiple, uh, multiple areas. Uh, thanks Basil for pointing that it could be related to the amount of maximum connection. Despite what the metric says, it's still important to check. Um, we delivered earlier today a set of Nginx tunings uh, because we were able to reproduce the issue. Hervé spent quite some time during the past days on this one, and we spent some time earlier today. Um, Hervé, I ask your help to re-trigger a build forced on Digital Ocean using the ACP with the new settings. Uh, uh, where Did you have time to check the result of this one? 
Yes. Did it fail or did it succeed? It failed because of a timeout for the first time and I restarted it, but I didn't have time to check why it failed again. Okay. So. Okay, so we don't. Okay. So right now there is no blocker. First, because uh, thanks to Hervé's work during the past day, I think it was Friday, um, when the builds are running on DigitalOcean, then we use Gfrog. So it's a bit more bandwidth, but that allows developer to run the, uh, the big amount of bomb builds that we are having. So currently not blocked, no ACP when on DO. Uh, and work in progress on enabling ACPDO again. So thanks, Hervé, for checking this one. Uh, and I think that's all. There has been a discussion triggered by Tim uh, uh, about why are we using Nginx instead of uh, our own Artifactory instance. So the discussion is healthy. Uh, it sounds like there are different solutions. I'm not sure if it's a willingness to change the world setup or to just ask question to think. I'm not really sure right now. I'm gonna, uh, we are going to check this one because digital sun might need, that's a subsequent subject, might need to be stopped in a few days. So maybe we won't have to, to dig dive on that one. So I propose that outside the, the build that Hervé just mentioned that we are checking with the new Nginx setup, I propose that we don't spend too much time here. I restarted the build as it was a timeout again. Timeout? Oh. Yeah. Okay, good. I gotta check the timeout reason then. Thanks. Um, GPG key expires on March the 13th. So that issue is only there waiting for tomorrow LTS and the end of all the, uh, the, the issue. Because right now the weekly Debian repository and Red Hat repository are signed with the new key, but not the LTS one. That will be okay tomorrow and that issue should be closed. So it will mechanically move to next milestone. Any question? Okay, so I'm really sorry for the users that are having issues and that are frustrated by that problem. If you just have to wait tomorrow and the problem will be gone. Yeah, and I have the action item from the board meeting on Monday that be sure we convene a retrospective to figure out what we do to prevent that in the future. We may want an admin monitor months ahead and et cetera, et cetera. There are lots of things to improve. I, my apologies. We made a bunch of mistakes on, on that PGP expiry and on the code signing certificate. We'll get better. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so let me write this down. Incoming post mortem to improve for next time. Um, closed after LTS release tomorrow. So digital ocean, the credits are almost all exhausted um, because of uh, the unusual activity on the bomb builds that we had last month that unusual activity seems to be more and more the normal activity. And the EC2 issues we had and the shift of traffic and workloads, uh, we, we consumed 8K instead of 1.5K during the past month in digital ocean to handle the big amount of builds. So we only have a few days left of credits. I think we should be under the, the $1,000. And that's my credit card on this one. So I will stop the service once we will have depleted all the credits. Hopefully, Hervé was able to communicate that to Digital Ocean earlier today. So we hope we should have an answer and we should do that at the same time. Um, so the question is, are they okay to extend the credit or grow? Uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe that will be the end of the Digital Ocean platform. I don't know. Uh, if it's the case, we will have to search for other sponsor. And if not the case, we still have to search for the sponsor to extend the increasing amount of builds from the developer. 
that's a good ill sign for the community, but that's quite the nightmare for us. We have to search for fundings on that area. Any question on that topic or update or things I could have forgot? Okay, so let's wait for answer from the O for adding credits. Again, we are really thankful to Digital Ocean for helping them, uh, for helping us, because yeah, we we really really um, had the opportunity to to shift our workloads directly to Digital Ocean with almost no pain. That was quite easy. The only issue, and it's not even sure it's Digital Ocean related, is the ACP. But yes, uh, their API and doc was quite nice. So say again, thanks for what you did for the Jenkins project. I hope we will be able to continue. Um, <coughs> we have a user uh, saying that the password reset email is not coming. So we tried multiple times, they don't receive. The problem that the Jenkins Infra uh, discovers is that accounts Jenkins IO send email through SendGrid SMTP. We, we have, that means we have a working account on SendGrid. I've asked Kosuke for accessing that SendGrid account, but he gave me access to a mailgun mail gun account. So I might have missed something. So from now on, we have two solutions. Wait for Kosuke to to tell us if he has access to SendGrid and if he can change that account. I don't even know if we pay for that. So Mark, I might need your help on that area. Okay, uh, it's it's in, SendGrid is definitely in the list of infrastructure that we use. Uh, I'll have to, ref, we'll have to read that page to be sure. Okay. Um, the main goal is, can you ping Kosuke? just to be sure that he see two different person asking him to check SendGrid because I might have missed something, but yeah, I'm, I need help to have an answer. Uh, I'll, I'll ping Kosuke, yes. And um, I will communicate to the user, but right now we cannot analyze why the user is not uh, receiving email. My proposal is that we check, we wait until the end of week, and if we don't add any news from Kosuke or anyone else that could help us get access to SunGrid, I propose that we shift account up to Mailgun since we have access. So at least we should be able to monitor the state of the emails that could have been refused by the remote user IMAP servers. Does that make sense? Wait until... Yes. End of week. If no sun grid access, then let's shift to mail gun. So we can so we can diagnose such issues. <coughs> so I'm gonna tell that to the end user that we don't we uh, we have an issue accessing the emails SMTP, so we cannot check. Either they can use another email address or wait for us to get access or change the SMTP. Um, we have work in progress. So uh, on using Azure IRM64 virtual machine. So as a reminder, Azure announced in December 2022 that virtual machine with uh, IRM CPU was a GA. So now we can use them. That's a good news because Stefan last week, last month, sorry, um, shifted all the EC2 uh, virtual machine workloads on now private controller to Azure VM controller to decrease the AWS bill and to have less bandwidth and to have a centralized management inside Azure. But we still are using IRAM64 for building images. So we need virtual machines, Linux virtual machines with IRAM64. Right now we keep using EC2 for that. That issue is about doing the same for Azure. Uh, do you have a status report on that one, Stefan? Yes, this morning I was able to uh, switch from uh, uh, Ubuntu 22.22 because uh, thanks to the work of Hervé, I think. So it seems to, to, to work better. I, I am waiting for another pull request to add that 22 uh, channel to the uh, gallery in Azure to be able to spawn those VM. So it sounds good. 
the Azure Terraform for Gallery Management. Okay. Exactly. Cool, thanks. So we'll have to check this one. Is there any question on that area? I don't. Um, something, a question that we had privately, uh, it was just an idea and we are going to open that more and more. Uh, we were thinking about being able to use these ARM64 machines on both AWS and uh, Azure for the workloads that shouldn't, that shouldn't be concerned by the kind of CPU. We thought, I think you mentioned, you asked about the BOM, uh, Hervé. Yeah. Uh, the question is, Do we uh, is the BOM, uh, the whole PCT steps, these 300 steps that cost us a lot, are there some that could run on ARM64 or even all? Because the cost is 20, between 15 to 25% depending on the cloud and the instances. So it's not the only thing we have to do, but at least gaining 10, 15% on the cloud cost for this bill could be interesting. I'm not aware of anything in the the BOM or PCT build in the BOM builds right now that is dependent on um, Intel architecture on AMD 64. I would expect it at least the plugins I maintain run happily on ARM 64 just as well as they run on, on AMD 64. So that could be interesting for this one and eventually for, for the plugin CI, but not all plugin. So that could be also something proposed to the developers saying by default, we might want to shift to ARM by default, unless you need a specific Intel binding. In that case, you should, you should, uh, we should provide something on the pipeline library for build plugin. Well, and, because... and we certainly could already provide an argument in pipeline library that says that allows you to opt in to ARM 64. Right? Yes, absolutely. Or or opt into platform independent. Maybe ARM64 is the wrong choice, but saying, hey, as far as I know, this plugin is platform independent, pick any one. And it would allow us then on occasion to run on System 390 if we wanted. Of course, building Jenkins itself and running the ATH won't work on ARM64. In the case of the ATH, not only because acceptance test you want to run the real life, uh, we could add specific acceptance test only for ARM, but you have to know that most of the Docker images that are used in the acceptance test harness are using Intel image and the, right. the required work for ATH will be clearly too high for now. So that's why ATH is out of question. And in the case of Jenkins, the question should, can be raised, but I think the, the Jenkins score itself might be a bit complicated. Um, that's also something for us inside Infra to think about. All of our workloads should be able to run on ARM to decrease our build. Kubernetes management, Terraform project. Uh, most of the tools that we're using are statically compiled using Golang. So ARM is one of the targets and we can use binaries for this platform. Is that okay? Or do you have question, objection, things that make you think so in terms of of net cost savings there are other things that are higher priority in terms of cost savings right there are other things that we think will could save us more 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 cash but i like i like platform portability and the cost savings is nice i, I see that one as a not top priority but still important because we have to do it step by step and as mm. you say if you start if you start with opt-in we can do a little bit, little bit of this task every week until we have something working. The task, the issue itself on the notes is mandatory because we need to be able to opt out of AWS at any moment. So we need the same feature parity between both clouds. Next task is the same kind. It's a long running task. We have to upgrade uh, all of our Ubuntu instances out of uh, 18 and ideally out of 20. The goal is to update everything we can in to Ubuntu 22. So thanks, Hervé. You did the first release of the Packer image using that new Ubuntu version. We are currently 
uh, we, we are going to roll out first that version on our private controller, verify that we can run Docker and uh, uh, our tools without any issue. And once it's okay, then we should be able to roll out to CI Jenkins IO. So I propose, uh, Hervé, if it's okay for you, that we deploy as soon as we can to infra CI. And we, we uh, my proposal arbitrarily, if it's okay for you, is to roll out to CI Jenkins IO with an announcement to developer uh, Thursday. So tomorrow, Wednesday will be LTS and Thursday will be Ubuntu 22 for most of the agents. Does it make sense for you? Is it okay for you? Cool. And the next step, obviously, uh, that that will be from the team, so it can be your way, but it can be someone else. It will be planning to migrate all of the Linux uh, node pool that we use on all of our Kubernetes cluster. So the underlying machines are switching to Ubuntu 22. We can control that for sure on Azure and AWS. Uh, no, I'm not sure AWS, I think we're using Amazon Linux so that we shouldn't be concerned, but at least on Azure. And I don't know for DigitalOcean as well. Is that okay for you folks? Page two. Uh, so we have Packer image to roll out to ci.g Thursday. Testing in infra CI. We have Kubernetes node pools, at least Azure, maybe Deo. And the next step will be checking our Docker images. Checking Jenkins dash infra slash Docker I think we have at least the open VPN that is still Ubuntu 19, so that should be increased. And we got uh, the, yeah. the VMs. Yeah, but afterwards. They don't. Yeah. Uh, two next issues, unless you have another other point on Ubuntu 22. No, okay, so document code signing certificate renewal process and renew the signer certificates. So these one are quite the <coughs> are quite the it right now. I propose that we we give a summary of what what we did today, uh, Mark Stefan Hervé, and what are the upcoming next steps that we could go for the release. Is that okay if we discuss that now? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, so, document. Uh, I've shared with, uh, we have shared the four of us on a private channel because the sensitivity of the data that we exchange. We have shared, we were able to upload the new DigiCert after uh, fighting with transforming it from different OpenSSL certificate formats. But it sounds like Azure accepted the certificate and was able to parse it and determine all the meta information, which is a good direction. So we should be able to update soon the documentation once it will be finished. There were just a few missing elements compared to what we have. It wasn't enough, but it was good enough for us to get started. So now we need to be sure that the data we have added, the new DG certs inside the vault, is able to be used on two elements. First, to be able to generate a sign MSI installer for Jenkins. New one inserted in Azure. Need to check MSI generation and the jar generation by Maven. Tricky part is- Well, uh, and for, could we, could we change that word generation to signing? Because really, it, it, the thing that we generate the jar, just, we, we generate the WAR file just fine. It's, it's that we want to be sure we're signed. Yep, that's signing the correct word. Thanks, uh, Mark, for, uh, for using this one. Yeah, otherwise it's confusing. <laughs> um, today, the weekly has been generated and signed with the former certificate. The verify steps, which is the last step of the release pipeline, failed. Now it's time to decide what we do with the pack. Do we want to package, to start packaging this version? So let me write this down. We have today's weekly. 
is released with old cert. The packaging um, is currently configured to not generate a MSI, signed or not, no MSI at all for today's weekly. Is configured for no MSI at all. The goal was to avoid a stressful message with that MSI because it would have been signed by the old certificate. And every user downloading it would have been red, red, big red error message on Windows, which is pretty scary. We don't want that. That's why we say better not having MSI at all. It's a weekly release, user can wait or take last week release or LTS. Um, now, do we want to trigger the package build as it? Or do we want to roll back mark change that disable MSI generation and add a second change that will use the new DigiCert and start and checking that we can produce an MSI with the new certificate, meaning we can validate that the action we took in the past hours are okay with the new certificate at least. So the jar will be signed with the older one, not verifiable, but the MSI should be okay. That's yeah, the so, first step. So alternative, to be sure that I captured the alternative. Mm -hmm. So alternative one is continue the packaging. As it. Packaging as is, no MSI, right? Yep. Alternative two is, and after that, then then revert. <coughs> well, no, that, that that's okay. Alternative two, continue or revert revert or let's say it this way add msi to packaging continue the packaging add msi to packaging and new certificate right and new cert signing uh, so, yeah new signings. right exactly and, and, and then a, a new weekly this one no, no, no. We could we could continue the existing okay. one because it hasn't run the packaging step, right? And new signing. So this is current weekly. Uh, includes MSI and um, signed jar, right? Or signed war file. Exactly. The so jar. Are... Yep. The the danger is that if if we there may be some surprise in there where we we say, oh, whoops, a something failed and alternative one might have detected that failure. But for me, alternative two is a much more attractive choice. Alternative three would be a, a, a full new weekly with the new cert. Right, Absolutely. right. I think so. Alternative three, a new weekly build using the new certificate certificate right with the risk of failure because we missed something somewhere right and and then we're stuck in the mode of guessing of trying to of diagnosing what failed and having diagnosed what fails then we've got to or how do we fix it so we we may choose between alternative one and two and add the the three one after correct that. Alternative three is, is possible even if we choose one or two. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And, and really, we could do one, and then we could even attempt two, right? But the problem with attempting two after one is, no, no, I take it back. We can't. We choose either one or two and then three. Yeah. We, exactly. cannot do, we cannot do both one and two because as soon as we've performed the packaging step, if it's successful, it will not repackage again, that same release. Exactly. I would choose two and then three, my personal way. Yeah, the same there. Because the, the, the two include one. Yeah, the uh, same there. My goal uh, on proposing the alternative two right now is to have uh, an intermediate step to validate, as we say, it's uh, the certificate state is it correctly encoded and usable the new certificate well and is for it, me uh, yep, alternative correct. two is more attractive because it's also much faster if we exactly. choose when we choose alternative three we have at least a two-hour window 
before we get any feedback. Whereas the packaging step will complete in 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. And if yeah. there's something wrong with alternative two, we can stop, think, find, and then do the three. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Anyway, there is a risk that even with alternative two walking as expected, yeah. we may um, fail three. The way packaging consume the DigiCert certificate is different than how Maven consume it. Right. So we could still have a bad surprise when Maven try to read the file. But I assume that, um, yeah, at least we have a smoke test with alternative two. If it's smoke, it's bad. And then we will, uh, uh, Maven will fail immediately before generating any data as far oh. as I can understand. I remember so we, can, oh. we can start it again. Exactly. The only thing is that we are time constrained because we must finish everything before the LTS tomorrow. That's a request from me as Jenkins infrastructure officer because I don't want the LTS build to discover bad surprise in last minute. Oh, that, that would be would great be to awesome. finish between before midnight. Uh, um, the correct time. Oh, yes. th there isn't a fixed timeline tomorrow for the LTS. So as soon as we right. take decision, we can say don't start the LTS process because it's a human that will trigger it. Right. So we can ask that human to say, hey, wait for the weekly to be finished, even if it delays a few hours. Is that correct, Mark? That is correct. LTS is triggered by the release lead. So in this case, Chris Stern, and he'll trigger. All we have to do is ask him, hold, please don't trigger until we give the go. Perfect. Is that okay for everyone? Uh, should we ask the team, Yacon, the release officer, for a last uh, stump on this one? For last, is it is he okay? Is it okay if I ask him directly on the? I think uh, that makes channel? yeah. I, we certainly want him informed about what we're doing, and and yeah, asking asking for a pause on the launch of the of the of tomorrow's LTS. Tim Tim's a good one to ask and copy Chris Stern on it. Okay. And probably should copy Alex Brandis as well, just because Alex has been a frequent release lead. And um, what are the the let's say the annoying part of triggering a new weekly in an unexpected way like this? What will be the additional work that it will generate for everyone here? Documentation, as I understand, maybe more changelog things. Yes. Well, sorry. Ask ask your question again, Damien. I'm sorry. Uh, what are the consequences that I don't foresee of triggering a second weekly, which oh, is uh, yeah, we time. would have to we would have to create a new change log, but the change log is is pretty easy to do, and that that's a very low risk item to do it. Yes, people will wonder why the change log is so brief, and we'll put a banner on it that says this change log is so brief because we were verifying the uh, the MSI. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. But, but alternative two is not is not creating generating a new uh, a weekly version. It's it's packaging the one that we got with the same version. So Correct. the only one is the alternative three, which will trigger a new version. But this one will be packaged correctly with the everything with the new search. So it it it's not only to check. It's it's the the real good one with the new set not expired well so so if alternative two is successful it will result in a signed jar file or signed war file and a signed msi if alternative two is or no i take it back that's that's wrong alternative two only validates msi signing not war yeah. war file you're correct the so so one of the changes in alternative three's change log as you said stefan would be the war file is again signed. With yeah, the, with the uh, correct, right. yeah. It's signed with, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not sure that the signing even applied the that expired certificate. So I, I, I suspect what we will see on the current war file is that it looks unsigned. Okay, yep. So let's go for that. Um, I'm taking on, We'll ask validation to team before proceeding and we'll 
let now Chris turn as the LTS lead and Alex Brandes as a frequent please lead. Oh, you you will just before proceeding the the three the two we don't really need it. Correct. Or, or you or we need because the two is just packaging so they don't really care. I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Before proceeding for the three. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that's all. Um, so as you said, Mark, we will have so the board asked for a post mortem for both GPG and code signing, which I believe will be must uh, do it earlier. Uh, yes. Well, there, I mean, there, there are a number of other things hiding in it, but the, the most okay. obvious is do it earlier. Yes, absolutely. Because I saw a set of different user complaint on specific details like changing the key name or not that, okay, we can discuss that, that's healthy to raise them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I see this proposal from user just a frustration from someone not being able to finish their day-to-day -day job, which I can understand. However, mm -hmm. yeah, there are consequences of doing as, of not doing, of not saying no to end user sometimes. Uh, but okay, uh, do we have other elements on that area? about the signing cert and everything. Okay. Any question, any objection, any things unclear that you want to bring on these topics? Nope. So now uh, next issue, realign repo Jenkins CI Aug mission. It's easy, nothing was done. <laughs> I started the cluster and then we had a lot of uh, the other tasks, so I didn't have time. Anyone interested on helping finding an highly available LDAP that we can run on uh, virtual machines or Kubernetes is absolutely welcome to help here. Um, yeah, I still have that Elm chart to test locally. Finally, an issue I saw just before the meeting, you were able to send a pull request survey on that topic uh, about uh, uh, to allow us to close that part. It's about the disk space of the container agent used for the bomb builds that triggered issue. We don't have issue today, but it's an improvement, especially for performances. Can you remind me the status uh, around this one? I absolutely forgot. Yeah, so I have opened the pull request to mount uh, the TMP on the home Jenkins folder as uh, MTDR volume. As they, are, as they are currently moved as overlay. Okay. Um, are not overlay, that's a good thing. Um, okay. Will you be able to sync up on this one after or tomorrow, maybe? Uh, I'm wondering about the testing process. Uh, I believe we should be able to test it. Uh, not only, a, so yeah, is it okay? Or do you want to discuss uh, it there? Your choice. We can discuss this later. Okay, it's so just to let you know that uh, we might have to select uh, an annoying path, a slow path, annoying because slow, to be sure that we don't break all the agent at the same time. Uh, I will give you elements because I feel like I wasn't clear and I didn't add and neither took the time to explain the testing path there. So I wasn't expecting the test path to be there. So the goal is to discuss and learn all together on how could we test this kind of element in production without breaking everything. Yes. Uh... I just see your message about the digital lesson answer. Woo, thanks, survey. What did wow. they say? Give us the primer. Uh, they approved the extension and the renewal of the sponsorship. And uh, Oliver will help us uh, in a day or two. Great. Okay, so does that mean they are going, they are extending again or just putting what you request? I've just- That's the surprise. I will okay. see with Oliver in a day or two. 
Okay, so at least that means we won't have to uh, delete digital ocean. We didn't renew the token for nothing, and that means we will have to continue our analysis with the bond bills then. Excellent. Cool. So Hervé, the message, the message from, from them looks like they're willing to continue funding us at least at the at the level that we were funded before, other than the one ex extraordinary month. I I don't have any idea about the ah. level. I, okay. I just read you almost what the okay. response, and I don't have any idea of how much. Okay. Oh, well, thanks to DigitalOcean, th and thank you for asking them. That's great. Uh, if it's okay, I propose that we de decrease a bit just as a safety measure for my credit card. Um, if it's okay for you, yes, unless someone day. wants, yeah. yeah. That's why I will, uh, if it's okay for everyone, I will open a pull request that will decrease the maximum amount of builds back to the normal so we won't have any possibility, but it will still be used. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Yes. Cool. For, for, your, for your dream in night, yes. <laughs> Fair. Um, a few new issues, if it's okay for you. Um, so we received an alert about the update center a certificate that need to be renewed. Uh, that was done one year ago. We have uh, two months, but I propose that we uh, do it in advance. So if it's okay, thanks, Stefan, for changing the alert, the calendar alert to an issue. Uh, I'm going to add this one to the next milestone. We'll have I to work on that. I started already. I sent you some stuff. Cool. Um, I'm looking at the new issues. So that one will be on the new, let me add it in the notes. Uh, new issues. Um, I will format the, the notes after the words. Up. So we have this one, uh, digital ocean credit depleted. That one is already on this one. Migrate trusted CI Jenkins IO from AWS to Azure. That's the next big thing for you, Stefan. Um, we have free virtual machines that allows trusted CI, trusted CI to run currently on EC2. Uh, we want to move that workload to Azure so we can have a centralized management and less bandwidth costs. We might need to only move two virtual machines depending on the, let's say, network security solution we will select. The third one called Bounce uh, is an SSH bastion. Um, we can have the same pattern. We can have an Azure Bounce bastion because they provide cloud resource. We could use VPN. That's something to be discussed. But at least starting the Azure Terraform resources for two new virtual machines with the associated data disk uh, and install them with Ubuntu 22 then that could be a great start inside a private network of their own. So is that okay for you to take this one, Stefan? Yes. Then the sensitive part will be the permanent agents. Once you will be able to manage with Puppet these two machines with Terraform and Puppet, they are empty inside the private network as a first step. We will have to think carefully with Daniel and Daniel is here the bus factor about the way update center generation works because the cache is using hard links. So we will have to air sync and migrate this, but using hard links, not sim links. And hard links are really sensitive things. If you delete the hard link, it deletes the point in the associated file. That's the most uh, tricky part. No risk for us because we will only run air sync from a machine to the other, but still I, be careful. I was about to say, oh, Hervé, in fact, it's yours, but no, I keep it, so okay. So Daniel will be our source of knowledge for that part. Uh, we already asked him elements. There will be plenty of way to test it without any risk, but it's just, okay, that's a ch knowledge sharing. Okay. The goal is to control cost on AWS. And upgrade to Ubuntu 22 for that machine. That part will be the easiest part because we only run Docker images or GDK builds. Great. Any question, objection on this one? 
There is a third one that I've added that we need to, to start. It's not top priority, but it's really important. We are spending more than thousand bucks per month just of outbound bandwidth of CI Jenkins IO controller. There are two sources, we have identified two potential sources of outbound bandwidth. The first one will be for people browsing CI Jenkins IO. At first sight, I'd say just a few web pages, but as uh, some people there that already mentioned, yeah, downloading the logs of a bomb build. And I'm sure that both Mark and Hervé can confirm that clicking on console output, full console output takes some time because it's 30 to 40 megabytes log output for bomb builds. So that one could be a source. It looks like we have uh, Apache logs parsed on Datadog. So we need to go on Datadog and run whatever magical request or put it on SQLite and run whatever. I, I'm not neither a Python or a SQL person. So I will use uh, happily Datadog uh, interface or shell. The other source that could be one of the also uh, quite big, it's the stash on stash. Let's say for a bomb build, um, you, we are stashing what is called a mega war. It's a war file with the set of plugins that are being tested as part of one of the 300 builds. So it's generated one time, stashed one time during the preparation phase, and then it's unstashed for each of these two or 300 steps. So if you generate it on DigitalOcean, you stash it, it sends to Azure. So stash is only inbound, it's okay. But then for every AWS or DigitalOcean BOM PCT builds, you have to unstash it two or 300 times. That is outbound bandwidth from the controller. And that one is a lot of data. So one of the solution is using the, um, what we call external artifact manager. These are alternative implementations that instead of zipping the file on the agent, sending them to the controller, which are the stash or archive artifact, they do the same. And then a stash is, unstash is sending it back to agent through the same inverted protocol. Instead it say, oh, let's use that S3 bucket. And so the agent copy the data on the S3 bucket and the other agent should be able to reuse from the same S3 bucket. The part I don't know here is, can we do that on a S3 bucket inside DigitalOcean and another inside AWS? I don't know, that's the part that should be studied, but at least that will avoid a bunch of stash and stash directly to see a Jenkins IO itself. Less pressure on this one as well. Yeah, or could we stash to the artifact caching proxy, right? As, as another angle on you read that. my mind. It's, We've, we've got an HTTP server sitting there, right? But the problem then is permissions to write to that thing. And that may not be what we want. Yes, um, that could be, could not be used. I don't know. That will require, yeah. I, I don't think it has been built for that use case. Right. But yeah, that, that's, that's an option. Uh, can I ask you to add, uh, to comment on the issue? Sure, yes. So that one, that budget will allow us to host the trusted CI virtual machines without any overhead cost if we're able to decrease the bill here. Any question on this one? Any objection to add it to the next big cost for us? Um, we had not important issues, but uh, just wanted to mention them. I'm going to move them. Uh, add launchable to agents. Basil is working on launchable um, and require a tooling. Uh, the proposal and he created that issue just to keep track. It's not priority now. It's a low priority, but we can do it if we have time. The goal is to install launchable command line tools and style inside our information, inside our machines and templates. So that that won't be required to install each time launchable is called. So it's optimization. Uh, that one we had. Thanks survey for adding create script to lock and lock Azure resource group. So we almost deleted CI Jenkins IO in production last week due to a human mistake on Terraform. And Azure provide a way to lock some critical elements. So the 
let's say the direction we are all going, the consensus is having an external script where we identify the sensitive element and we lock them. So any change on Terraform once it's code managed or even today when it's manually managed, any change that we involve deleting and recreating the resource because whatever change uh, we want to do accidentally will be blocked and forbidden, even if the user has the permission. So um, I think it's a bit too early to spend time on that. We already have enough, but yeah, I, let's keep that in mind. That should be done uh, the same thing as the backups. The more operation we are doing, the more critical it start to be. So better planning for it instead of suffering for not having had the time for this one. Uh, then we have an issue. Uh, that one is also for later, so no priority. It's removing credential and using workload identity management. We can do it for third CI and CI.g today, uh, but yeah, that's, let's say, bonus. The rest is for later. I don't have any more issues or recent changes or things to speak about. Do you have other topics or is it okay for you folks? You, you don't want to speak about the, the discussion you have to, uh, to get budget for, uh, um, from CDF, I think, for Amazon. Am I wrong? No, that's, I, I think, I think you may be referring to a request to adjust the settings in the Azure account to allow oh. us greater flexibility. And I, as far as I can tell, yeah. that's, that's resolved, Depends. at least resolved in the sense that the question has been asked and clarified with Fati Di Germanci of, of CDF. Yep. You're right. Oh, correct. Um, oh, I see, uh, Hervé, thanks. Yes, good point. Uh, we received an answer from Docker Open Source despite us closing the issue because um, they they went back and they won't uh, sunset the free team. Uh, they confirmed that Jenkins here in France, Jenkins for Eval, are part of the open source program. They, were, they weren't just added with the label on the advertising publicly. Thanks, survey for the reminder. Good point. So, uh, I confirm that that's what we want uh, because there is no need, and I would say it's even safer for us for not advertising this publicly. Not because it's secret, but because these two organizations uh, are using images for our own usage in the case of Jenkins CI Infra. So I don't see a point. Uh, the goal is not to publish that for external usage because the effort for helping and supporting people on our use cases is worth nothing. Um, so that's up to the debate. Uh, we can always ask them to uh, add the badge, but I, uh, so as Hervé checked, we have more than 50 million pools on some of our images on the infra. So that means these images are popular. That's, that's bothering me. It's like, that means people are, millions of people are downloading images that have no documentation, no guarantee, no life cycle out of the open. I mean, we, we could run some Bitcoin miner and gain some money for the sponsorship, <laughs> right? Sorry, I, I had to say I it don't believe that. it's coming <laughs> from your mouth. Sponsoring problem now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> the richest open source program in the world, right? <laughs> uh, so jokes aside, no, that's that's bad for them. But my proposal, and again, you can disagree, but think about it. I don't want us to be advertisers. Hey, let's reuse uh, your tools. We don't even have time for supporting our own use case. So supporting our use case on someone else's machine is, yeah. Anyway, Fair. that could be a way to get some contribution, though. So mixed feeling about that. But right now, yeah, proposal is that we keep it things as it is. And we think about deleting this organization in the future from the Docker Hub and using something else. For Jenkins for Eval, please don't advertise this element, this one. This one must not be advertised. I can accept for Jenkins CI Infra, but if you do Jenkins for Eval advertising that, yeah, yeah, let's choose it, you will have the Jenkins security team that will come for you. They will find your address, they will find you, <laughs> and we will never heard about you again. 
Now Jenkins for Eval is only untrusted workload. Please don't, adver don't advertise. It's only for testing on short time window. The content here cannot be unsure that it's safe to run. We can say for Jenkins here and fraud because we use it, but not Jenkins for Eval. Other topics? Okay, so before I close, I just want to thank everyone there for the huge work you have done during the past two weeks. All of you, honestly, that has been really, really two challenging weeks with a lot and a lot of things. And I'm really happy because alone, two years ago, our, uh, Olivier was suffering and he did that for years. And yeah, I know the amount of time and the difficulties we all have. We all have a, yeah, a lot of work. We don't all work all together the same way. We all have different ways of working, but that's, I'm really proud of the team and uh, the amount of tasks and things we do. And personally, that's a relief because I know, I've known that when I'm not there, I can be back. And I know that all my tasks are reviewed by you folks. Uh, and you have the ability to say no or to challenge what I said. And it's really, really a safe place for me. So really thanks team, because that makes the project really healthy and really, really efficient. So ability thanks for all the work you do. And on these good words, see you next week for everyone watching this. And for the others, see you later or tomorrow. Thank you.